Today we're going to set up our Raspberry Pi Zero W to connect to a Wi-Fi network on its very first boot. This means that we can do away with bulky hardware like a monitor, keyboard and mouse and we'll just be remotely accessing the Raspberry Pi over Wi-Fi. Let's get started. Over on the Raspberry Pi Foundation website, I've already gone to Downloads and downloaded Raspbian Jesse Lite. Because we're accessing our Pi remotely, I've chosen Lite because it doesn't have the graphical user interface that you would normally get if you had a monitor plugged in. If you still wish to keep that, you can use Raspbian Jesse with Pixel, that's fine. I've just gone for Lite today. So I've already downloaded that into my Downloads folder as you can see here. So now the first thing we have to do is flash it onto an SD card. I've got my 16 gig micro SD card on the bench here. So I'm going to put that into the SD adapter and we'll flash that using a utility called Win32 Disk Imager. So here's our imaging utility. So my, my drive is drive G, that's correct. So I'm going to go to downloads and select the Raspbian and Jesse Lite image and then write it to the SD card. And we just get a warning, but we're gonna say yes to that. And we'll just wait for that to finish flashing. Okay, so our image has been flashed successfully. So we'll just close those dialogues. Now, in order to connect our Raspberry Pi to a Wi-Fi network, we're going to modify the image that's on the SD card slightly. So I'm going to open my SD card. Here's our G drive, and we can see that it's been labeled boot now. We're accessing a special part of the SD card now that's only visible. Uh, this is the only part that's visible on a Windows operating system. So the Raspberry Pi Foundation have included some features that will allow us to create some files in this boot partition to allow us to affect our Raspberry Pi's behavior when it boots up. So the first thing we can do is give it the Wi-Fi credentials for the network we want to join. And to do that, we need to right click and select, select new text document. And I'm going to call this WPA underscore supplicant. Now we can open the file and this is where we enter our Wi-Fi credentials. So we do this by specifying network and then an equal and an open brace. Then on a new line, we enter SSID and this is the name of the network we want to join. So if you had my Wi-Fi network, that's where you would put it. On the next line, you enter PSK which is the password for this network. So that could be something like my strong password one, two, three. Not particularly strong, but good for an example. And we finally enter the key management uh, that we're using. So I'm using WPA2. So I'm going to enter key MGMT equals WPA underscore, ah, sorry, hyphen PSK. Uh, there's no quotes around that one. And then on the next line, we just close the brace. So we can save that file now and close it. Now, the last thing we need to do for this WPA supplicant file is change its extension. So we, we backspace TXT and we insert C, O, and F for configuration and hit enter we'll get prompted that we're changing the file name, that's okay. Now, if you didn't see that file extension, in Windows 10, you can go to View, and I have this, this checkbox here, File Name Extensions Check. So you might have to check that just to make uh, file name extensions visible. So that's going to cause our Raspberry Pi to connect to the network we wanted to, but now we also need to enable remote access with SSH. And that's really, really simple to do. Once again, we create a new file, I'm just going to choose a text document and we label this SSH and now we just delete the file extension. So we're creating an empty file with no extension called SSH. Select yes. And that's all we have to do to the SD card. Now our Raspberry Pi is going to boot, connect to the network that we specified and open itself to remote connections. We're ready to boot our Pi up now. Okay, I've ejected my SD card, so now I just need to take the 
microSD out of the adapter, plug it into the Raspberry Pi, and we need to power it. So the first power sequence takes about a minute. Okay, here we are a minute in the future. So now we're going to connect to our Raspberry Pi remotely using a program called PuTTY, which is an SSH program. I've included a link in the description for this content on how to download that. Just going to open up PuTTY and this is what it looks like. So when you first power up a Raspberry Pi running Raspbian, it has a default host name, that is the name of the machine, and that's Raspberry Pi. So now that our Raspberry Pi is connected to our Wi-Fi network and has that default host name, we know exactly how to connect to it. So just in the host name box, I'm going to enter Raspberry Pi and hit open. Okay, so we get our black screen, which is our terminal, and then just a security alert. This is just as an alert saying that we haven't connected to this machine before, but I'm confident that it is the machine that I do want to connect to. So I'll just say yes. And there is our login screen. Can I, can I change the font on that? Okay, just to break there while I change the font size. So now we're going to log into our Raspberry Pi remotely, and the default username is Pi and the default password is Raspberry. And there's our prompt. So now we have a SSH connection to our Raspberry Pi and we can access it exactly as if we were sitting right in front of it. Now, before we proceed, it's probably a good idea to change the default host name, that is Raspberry Pi. It's, we wanna change that because if we ever deploy another Raspberry Pi that we wanna set up as headless, it'll be, useful to have Raspberry Pi as available on the network. So we're going to change it to something that's going to be unique. And we can do that with sudo raspi config. And the second option there is the host name. So we're going to change that. This is just telling us what characters we can use. I'm going to t uh, call this maybe dev pi zero and hit Okay, so now I've changed the host name and that's how we're going to have to connect to this Raspberry Pi in the future. While we're at it, it's a good idea to change the, the default user password because everybody knows that the default user is Pi and Raspberry. So we can leave the default user as Pi, but let's just change the password. Uh, let's enter a new password now. I'm just going to choose something simple and re-enter it. But at least now we don't have uh, Raspberry Pi as the host name that's on the network and we've at least changed the default password. So now there's at least some security. And for those changes to take effect, we're just going to hit finish and that'll prompt us to reboot. So I'll say yes. While that's rebooting, this, uh, this, uh, shell, this uh, putty session is about to close. So I'll just close that now. Now that we've renamed our Raspberry Pi, the, the machine name, I'm going to save that new name as a session. And this will be easy, an easy way for us to keep track of what machines we're connecting to. So the new host name that we've chosen is devpy0. And I can copy that and paste that into the save sessions box and press save. And now it'll be really easy for me to reconnect back with my Raspberry Pi by double clicking that option. So that should have rebooted now. Let's give that a go. I'll just select that and press open. And now we get another security warning because the previous session we were connecting to a machine called Raspberry Pi and now we're connecting to essentially the same address but it has a different name. And this is just Putty saying, hey, that might be a problem. But I know that we've done that so I can just say yes and I'll log in as Pi with my new password. And you can see we've logged in. And of course, the host name has changed on the prompt. And that wraps things up for this tutorial. Now we can deploy a truly headless Raspberry Pi Zero without it ever having needed to be connected to a monitor, keyboard, or mouse. I'll see you next time.